topic now is uh, in general on pneumatic tools, but specifically on the Rupus new triple action tool. And we'll explain what that means. So the triple action part comes in because there's uh, additional gearing in the top of the motor, uh, and that's what we mean by triple action. So um, in general, this tool, lightweight, uh, best in class, uh, and the class is actually new because uh, there is no nothing like it on the market. Um, so you can say best in class when you're number one. Among yeah, it's easy to say best in class <laughs> when you're the only one. <laughs> it's like, all right, I went to a, uh, you know, a fitness competition and I finished first in my class. And well. I was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> um, the gear set, it, the uh, technical description of the gear set is a epi epicyclic gear uh, reduction. So it takes the RPM coming out of the motor and creates a gear reduction and this creates so uh, the torque. So pneumatic by nature would have a high RPM, low torque. Yeah, and the reason for that, Matt, is uh, the pneumatics, the way the air motor is made, it delivers a high RPM because it has to compensate for what happens when the pad makes it to the surface. All these pneumatic tools, they start out high RPM because they know they're going to end up at a lower RPM under actual use. Mm. So that's why this, this the LHR75 uh, has 11,000 RPM out of this motor, but you're not getting 11,000 RPM to the paint because as soon as you make contact, it drops significantly down. Uh, but that's why that is. It starts at high RPM so that it can actually get to the desired RPM on the paint. But this motor is completely different uh, and doesn't do that, actually. The, because of the gear reduction, you're actually getting a lot more of that um, torque to the, to the pad. So, uh, in generally speaking, uh, and this is just a comment about all pneumatic tools, why do people prefer pneumatic over electric? Uh, of course, how lightweight the tools are. You can use them one-handed and low maintenance, so on air tools there's a lot less moving parts. Uh, you don't have the electronics, so there's a completely uh, low maintenance approach to it. Also low vibration, because the, uh, the tools can be designed with a very precise um, counterweight assembly, and uh, they can be vo low vibration because they don't have the dynamics of an electric motor behind it. Um, also increased durability, these tools tend to have less that go wrong with them and you can abuse them and use them all day. And what, is, what is the maintenance? A couple drops of oil and you're good to go? That's it. And, you, keep, your, and keep your air clean. So yeah. one of the things that destroys these motors is dirty air. Mm -hmm. So you oil them and you keep the air clean and they will just run. So what you just put, what kind of oil, do you, is there special... I guess the same oil you use for any kind of air tool. You just put a couple drops in the hole and... That's it. And uh, we actually provide that oil uh, when you buy the tool. Oh, it, okay. it comes with a little tube of uh, the oil. Perfect. So you don't have to think about which oil do I use because we actually provide it for you. Um, less dangerous is a comment about uh, the safety of these. Uh, the bigger the tool, the, the, the more it can get in the way of things. So. Uh, smaller tools tend to be safer to use. So this particular tool, it's all about that additional torque. So the interest of the design parameter that was put into the creation of the triple action tool is, hey, we want more of the movement to make it to the paint. Uh, so that's what this is all about. So two different pad diameters, same tool design, uh, it's just the counterweight assemblies are different for those pad diameters. The orbit's bigger on the it's three inch, 50 millimeter versus 12, right? Yeah. 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 15 versus 12. Uh, so, yeah, this counterweight assembly is actually geared for a little larger orbit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're correct on that. Uh, and that, by the way, just since you're talking about that, um, that is to compensate for the dynamics of the pad diameter. Mm -hmm. So in pad velocity, these actually will measure very similar between the two. So the, the or you play with variables like the orbit size and the pad diameter, and you'll get a target pad So how velocity. does that work? We were talking about this the other day, or yesterday, about 
DA smaller means more aggressive, right? Yes. Rotary smaller means less aggressive, opposite, right? All right. So now we have this funky thing that's gear driven DA. So if I'm going smaller, bigger orbit, how does that work? My mind well, is... your, your gear set is different and also the RPM coming out of the motor would be different. But the target really from the engineering standpoint is what the paint sees mm -hmm. is similar pad velocities between these two. It's just that you have more surface area here. See, I can just see myself between the two, all of my edges. I mean, other than the tight stuff with the nano, that's, at least that's my, my vision. Oh, for sure, yeah. Yeah, and today we'll go out and play on the car and you get to actually feel how these work. Dylan Von Kleist, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so here's what we mean by the triple action part. So there is the random orbital movement, which is similar to the movement in our other Bigfoot system. Then there's the gearing, the, the uh, gear set on top, and that contributes to what we're calling triple action. So the air moves the veins of the motor on top, right up here, yeah. and then that drives the gear set, which then provides torque, you know, th mechanical leverage, yes. which then translates down into the traditional counterbalance DA. With right? the free spinning rotary part, yeah. Yeah. An air, an air motor is essentially a fan. Yep. I mean, right. It's not that all that different from a turbo, really. Right. It's the same idea. So those veins, when, when this disappears, the veins actually slide in and out. Mm -hmm. So they rotate around, but they slide in and out, which captures the air in that chamber, moves the cylinder around, and then it So it comes in. around the cylinder and then goes out the back. Yeah. Just the like, I mean, there's, a, there's an entrance and an exit for the air. Right. When you pick a liquid pick a pad for that tool, we want you to select it from the random orbital system that we have. Okay, so no, um, not the Melee product package, but the actual normal DA stuff, right. so the normal pads. Because it's been scienced out for that movement. Okay. Now, granted, you're gonna have people using the thinner low profile pads on this tool, and right. everybody's gonna try it, but we've, validated the performance with those pads and those liquids. So that's, that's the intention. This, this stuff here goes on those tools. Okay. All right, so here are the three different systems. So LTA 75, LHR 75, again, non-gear driven, triple action gear driven. And you know, if you were in person, you could tell because of the weight. So you just picked up the difference. This is the, the non-gear driven is considerably lighter plus it has the little carbon fiber or oh, pseudo, pseudo carbon fiber thing. Not gear driven. Right, right, I was saying this is gear driven, not gear driven. Well, we can't call this gear driven because the movement is actually not gear driven. Oh yeah, good call. Yeah, so gear driven means another movement that we have another system on. This, this is still random orbital mm -hmm. dual action, but it has a gear set driving the output shaft. So scratch that, not gear driven, triple action driven, we'll there call you it. Go. <laughs> Same thing here, so triple action, triple action, uh, and then you know, your traditional pneumatic. Right? So we're gonna play with these on the car and show the difference. All right, so procedurally, this versus we all, I won't say all, but most of us are familiar with an LHR 15 or 21, you just throw a foam pad on it, do our normal whatever your, whatever your process is for priming the pad and go to town. Is it the same thing, a pneumatic? Any, it's, uh, any? it's same, same. So the priming, uh, because it is a random orbital movement, so all the things you would do with the electric mm -hmm. random orbitals you would do with this. Mm -hmm. Uh, so priming, cleaning the pad, the choice of liquids and pads, those are all the same. Same exact process, nothing special that we would need to do other than we have with these versus our normal DAs. DAs are on or off, right? These we have some speed control. Yeah. Which makes you feel cool, but you know, how do you, how do you then dial in the speed? How do you know what to do there? Yeah, because you don't have the either visual or the tactile. Uh, Click, right, indicate, one, two, three, yeah. four, right. So you don't know exactly what speed you're on. So what you need to do is actually prime the pad, 
put it to paint and adjust the dial to the desired pad speed. Mm -hmm. So this is less important what the dial is because whatever the dial speed is, as soon as you put it to paint, it's gonna change the speed of the pad. So you need to dial in the tool speed when with it's the on pad the on the paint um, and then get it to where you want it to be. And it requires a little bit more adjustment on yeah. the fly, right? Yeah. Adjustment, and then you have it on the trigger as well. So show me the, so the, the red knob is what does our, that would be set our limit, right? Our limit if we were to push this all the way down. Yeah. Right, so that, that is our adjustment for, for, but we still have some, it's a linear trigger, right? Yeah, so there's a, you can depress the lever 50% mm -hmm. and you'll get half of it. Right. So. And then if you were to dial this back, then as you press the thing down, you would set it off. Right, a lower limit. Yeah. So this dials in your high end. It, it controls the amount of air going through the motor. Right. So let's say you found the right speed. You, you're on the paint, you found the right speed then you could set the limit at that speed that you want. So you're not constantly sitting there with your thumb. You know, I never, I never realized that the first time I used it, my darn thumb was ready to fall off by the end of it because I was attempting to hold it you know, exactly at that spot that yeah. I wanted. The other thing to know about these uh, is a lot of folks that are first time using a tool like this, um, they don't understand the safety mechanism, um, but this is actually, uh, a release for the trigger and this is actually required by law this is regulated into the product for all pneumatic polishers so it isn't something that you know rupus alone did but you'll find mm -hmm. all all these types of yeah. handheld pneumatic tools have this sort of technology and what it is is it's it's to prevent the ability to accidentally compress the trigger and put speed to the pad mm -hmm. and somehow maybe mess something up yeah mess something if there was a cutoff wheel or something on there yeah so we've got the three tools matt um, there are two that are triple action and just for a reference and because we like this tool we're showing the lhr 75 so this is considered even though visually they look very similar uh, there's some big differences inside the motor uh, the motor housing. Uh, but this is the LHR 75 and this is a random orbital movement without the gear set on top. So this would be considered high speed, low torque. Mm -hmm. The LTA has the triple action technology built into it and this is considered low speed, high torque. Right. So that's, although visually they look similar, there are very big differences in what actually gets to the pad. You mean you can even feel it when you pick it up, the weight, the weight difference. It's weight. And then these two are identical in the sense that they're both triple action technology, uh, but this has larger pad diameter and also a different orbit. So this is a 12 millimeter orbit and this is a uh, 15 millimeter orbit. What about, uh, I mean, could you throw a six inch, six inch backing plate on the LTA 125? Not recommended? I mean, oh, on what, this, yeah, what um, would happen if you did that? It would throw off, uh, I would have the same answer actually for any of our orbital tools. If you take a backing plate diameter that was not designed into that tool and you expand it or shrink it, you are now changing the counterweight balancing of that tool. Uh, will it work? Maybe, right. but it's not uh, part of the engineering and the specs of that tool to have a different diameter. Now, what about uh, LHR 75E, the electric version versus oh. the 75? This is 15 millimeter versus a 12, right? So do we call this more cutting ability because it's 15 millimeters or is that offset by the electric motor versus the, you understand what I'm saying, the pneumatic? Well, the electric motor is 5,000 RPM out of that motor, and this is 11,000. So it is relatively, between this and the electric sister, this would be more powerful mm -hmm. for a number of reasons, just sheer motor speed, mm -hmm. but also the, the orbit, orbit size. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that was another thing that you, you could almost complement your 75E, your electric version, with that. They kind of, they don't, one doesn't replace the other, I don't think, right? I mean, it'd be, it's not out of the question to have both. Yeah, you could. Um, although, personally, I find that if I have the air compressor accessibility and I can drive this tool, I tend to be picking this one right. up more. Is that just because it's cool and makes you feel like a real Sounds man when you're great, doing it? You know. or? <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that with the electric version, no? uh, right? Yeah. But also, it just is a monster on edge work. It, yeah. It it literally is more efficient because you do less passes. There's no that's instant on. There's no like the ramp up of the electric motor. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I find myself reaching for this, but there are times where you either don't have access or you don't want mm -hmm. the air compressor part of the program. And the electric does great All right. for edge work. Let's, let's put this on the paint and see what happens. So centering, I always center uh, using the center cut of the backing plate with the center cut of the pad. It seems to be visually a really mm -hmm. good way to center. And then we are going to prime them the same way as we would any other random orbital. I'm going to prime and at the same time, I'm going to adjust my speed to where I want it to be. So probably a little bit more priming would be desired here. If I start, you know, if I see wide open spaces that are not covered with polish. There we go. So we'll just do this little section here. If I did that with the 75, the LHR 75, it wouldn't, it wouldn't do so well, would it? As, it would fall really yeah, well. yeah. I mean, that is incredibly smooth. Yeah. What about, uh, man. I'm never gonna use my uh, LHR 70, or uh, 15 again. <laughs> It's like magic. It's fun. It's like total magic. Now one thing to point out, uh, as you um, were going, I don't know if the camera picked it up, but you can stall the rotation. It's possible because this is a, this is a true uh, dual action random orbital movement. So the, the rotation is free spinning. And because of that, it's a safety feature built in that mm -hmm. helps you to... So if I came up... <laughs> Yep. So that still is possible, uh, and that is a good thing because that's your friend that's helping you to be. If I get up in here paper. and I stall, I'm not going to burn through. Right. But the thing to remember is that momentary rotation stall is not the end of the world. You're still doing work with the orbit. Mm -hmm. So if you came up to this contour, the rotation stalled for a moment. You work in that contour. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's not a not a big deal. But on the flat areas, you want to get it to rotate again. Now I notice on the pneumatic tools, there seems to be a little bit more, a little less. They're a little freer than the electric tools. So do the, does this still need to be lubricated? The backing plate. Yeah, all the shrouds need, do need to be lubricated. But this one is a little less restricted. Yeah. Uh, it does make contact, but not as much contact as the electric tools. And one reason for that is that the, the purpose of that contact is to slow down free spin in the situation called no load. So that's when you tilt the pad or when you pull it away from mm -hmm. the paint. It's to minimize the free spin in a no load condition. So once you load the pad, uh, it neuters that. Mm -hmm. So the motor now overpowers that friction point. Mm -hmm. 
Let's do a little more. This is super easy to keep flat, too, just because of the way your hands are positioned. <laughs> Holy crap, it's this thing fun, is awesome. It's a fun tool. That is fantastic. Like, I'm not just making this up because I'm here. This is what I, I built up in my mind of what it was going to feel like. Yeah. I used it for like 30 seconds at SEMA, you know, yeah. on like a little panel, but holy crap, that's awesome. And look at the results. I mean, they cleaned up that paint really good. Yeah. So, yeah, wow. it's uh, very ergonomic, very user friendly. It's light. I mean, I mean, most of the weight is coming from the darn airline, yeah. you know, so. Which you can actually do something about that. You can yep. and take the weight out of this and make it a lightweight hose. Yep, lightweight hose, swivel, swivel. Yep. Yeah. yep. Wow. Yeah, that's fun. Same thing, prime the pedal. Yeah, it definitely sounds different. And we'll, so we'll run the LHR here in a second, but. Just the sound makes me think like American V8, you know, with the extra torque. I just want to point this out. If the camera is picking up these little specks, what that is is foam dust. So in the production uh, shaping of the pad, it has a little bit of foam dust, and that's what's being kicked out. So a brand new pad, mm -hmm. you might see that, hmm. and it's not a big issue. It's just excess foam dust um, that is flying away from a brand new pad. Would you wash out a new pad beforehand? Well, I could... the if you're concerned about that, the thing to do is blow out mm. the pad first, yeah. and it'll blow away all that. Mm. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I mean, one of the concerns I'd have with these small machines is that you're in so tight, but that makes it much more controllable. Yeah. You know, so I'm in tight here, whereas, you know, on a, on a, on a regular, it would be out a little further, right? So, man. LHR 75. And uh, again, we're just kind of comparing and contrasting. Same pad diameter. Same job gets done. <laughs> Right away, you can hear and see more speed. Mm -hmm. So that, a uh, very different sound. And you're probably talking about a difference in RPM that's, you know, half. It's also like when I'm, if I'm left, lift it off. And you're not to hear the reduction. Yeah. Would you say that this may require a little more skill than that? Yeah, uh, I think it's a little more technique dependent because yeah. it's, it's powerful in terms of speed. You're talking yep. about twice the RPMs of the electric version of this. and on edge work where you kind of need to be careful anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things I've learned in, in training with this tool over the last several years is in a training environment with people that are new to this type of a polisher, if anybody's gonna burn through the paint, it usually is with this in their hands. Mm -hmm. 
even more so than the bigger. You get in there at 11,000 RPM like this. Yeah, and if yeah. you sit there too long yeah. with the with an aggressive pad, now with this pad, it probably won't happen, but right. you put a microfiber cutting yeah. microfiber and a strong compound and, a, and the power behind that tool, yeah. uh, it will go after it. I did find myself, you know, the, the few you know, hours I have using one of these things, uh, just taking more care, you know, thinking about it more sure. than. <laughs> Definitely more technique, just simply because of that. And if I walk around and I'm pushing down, I'm going to get a different result than if I'm not. So managing how I'm pushing down on this is way different than this one, where not a whole lot of change. The gear is just pushing right through my. So with the LHR 75, the technique adjustment that. I find myself recommending to people is less pressure and a little bit faster arm speed, mm -hmm. which will compensate for that extra RPM. So this one you can actually use pressure if you want, right? Um, and you're not going to lose a lot of torque because of that pressure. Wow. Yeah. Shoot. I'm going to have to walk around like this <laughs> <laughs> with both of yeah, them. Yeah, they're both great <laughs> approaches. So that's our pneumatic stuff. Oh, let's grab the um, the little one, the little TA, oh, little okay. TA fifty. Yeah. Just I've I've actually never even used one. All right, so here's the little TA fifty, which has you know an inlet line, and these I believe it comes with this, doesn't it? it comes with the regulator. Yeah, this this whole. All right. So the fitting here on the end I think is like equal thread BSP or something like that and then it converts through the regulator to NPT and then you can put your little quarter inch disconnect. And then this regulator, this, if you can see that, this is how we twist this in order to be able to adjust the, you know, the, the speed. Yeah, because this thing will, this thing moves. So, this is still an orbital, right? It's still I mean, a, a dual action random orbital, so if, if you can take the backing plate on the pad and it free spins, then that tells you the type of movement is a mm. random orbital. Because a rotary wouldn't wouldn't spin. A rotary or a gear driven orbital, if you if you rotate the pad, it'll turn the gears, turn the motor. Mm -hmm. So and you can actually feel it and hear it. But if it's free spinning rotation like that, it's a dual action random orbital. But this sucker screams. I mean, we were just looking up. It's what fifteen thousand RPM. Yeah. So in in this scenario. Standard ran random orbital movement, but this is a very high speed, small orbit approach. So it uses a three millimeter orbit, mm -hmm. but a lot of speed behind the pad. Um, which, for those of you on the market looking for tools like this, you'll see a lot of tools that look like this on the market. And you'll have to pay attention to the specifications, because although they look the same, You'll see a big variance in speed. You'll see a variance in orbit size. So it's just something to pay attention yeah, to. Yeah, we were. I was looking at the the LD. The LD30 was a half the orbit of this. Yes. So for us, you know, polishing DIY guys, I would think that this already has a tiny orbit. Yeah. You know, the, to get work done and not burn the paint is getting trickier as we get smaller and with a smaller orbit, right? Now the LD30 kind of looks like this, but it has smaller diameter pad, smaller diameter orbit, also Irish. half the tool speed. So it's at 7,500 RPM. Hmm. So, uh, it's kind of a drilled down version of this. Um, but let's go ahead and see the, the camera. I'm sure will pick up the noise from this, uh, the sound of the tool, but it's a very, very high speed. So one of the advantages of this approach, Matt, um, compared to, let's say, the, the LHR 75, obvious difference in pad diameter, but the difference in orbits, the one advantage of that is edge work. 
So with a smaller orbit, more of the pad is actually working on the edge of the surface. So you, when you do edge work with a small orbit at that high speed, you're actually doing a lot of work right on this edge. Whereas the larger pad, larger orbit tools, the efficiency on that edge becomes less. And of course, the other option is the Nano, right. uh, which also has a three Let's millimeter see the, orbit. Let's see what this puppy feels like. Oh, I like this little thing. Hmm. Yeah, this thing's cool. Yeah, that's pretty fun. A little tool, and again, it's precision on the edge. That that's what that's what you buy that tool for. Mm -hmm. You know, I get in these little, put the little one-inch pad on here, and yeah, roll through those. Yeah. So that's the TA50. All right. So that rounds out our line, right? So I think I've determined that this. I don't think this is necessary, right? I mean, may have a little bit too much precision uh, if you're doing intricate items you know maybe not a car but hmm. small intricate items i did hear of somebody uh, posting on social media that they use this tool to polish their uh, small scale die cast uh, <laughs> car collection you know that's all painted so they're doing their car but it's a <laughs> small scale so yeah there's a lot of precision built into that very small orbit very small pad i think i'm gonna have to buy one just to roll it in or out <laughs> I think if you had this or the Nano, yeah, uh, that would solve you wouldn't it. need that in addition. Uh, these, you probably don't, you don't need both, but it would be good to select one of those. Because mm -hmm. uh, this is a great, awesome air tool. Mm. Actually, my favorite in our lines right here, because yeah. edge work is just super yeah. fun and easy. You know? Yeah. So, I don't know, I think I would roll the whole car with one of these. You could, and what's great about this, because of the additional torque on the LTA, is you could do big pad defect removal, and then you can switch pads and actually apply wax, mm -hmm. you know, all with the same tool and do a great job. Easy. So, so that's, the, that's the pneumatic lineup for polishing that pretty much covers all of our bases. If we want to do the whole, you know, large part of the panel, we have the, depending on your preference of gear, you know, the uh, not gear driven, triple action driven, yes. or the, you know, or the higher RPM, you know, traditional DA. And then of course we have the little, the little guy there to get in yeah. and to get into the, the little cracks and, you know, edges. And then the thing to remember is just the, um, when it comes to driving these tools with the compressor, uh, the, the critical spec is CFM. Mm, yeah, we didn't talk much about that. A yeah. lot of people talk about uh, tank size and uh, air pressure, and those are important, but... We need the delivered air. Yes. This is 14, 13, 12, 13, 11, 11 and change. Yeah. yeah. So you can't, I mean, even like a really popular compressor is California Air Tools. They, oil free, they don't deliver nearly enough air. Even their biggest ones are delivering eight, nine CFM, you're really not gonna be able to run yeah. these. So a combination of we still need the tank so the thing isn't running, you're not starving like it. Off, yeah. But but man, I mean, to run even this, we, you need, a, you need at least line. a three horsepower, you know, stout compressor, you know, a compressor that's gonna deliver, say 15, 15 CFM, you know, so you're in the, that, that $1,500 and up, you know, air compressor, and then obviously you'd probably want to clean the air as well. Yeah, clean air is critical right. for these tools and also oil the tools periodically to yeah. keep them lubricated. See, the trick we want, we run into, one, one other thing you could do, I've been doing a lot of research on this, is you could do a filter lubricator 
but for us detailers we want to blow out our pads yeah. and so we can't use a filter lubricator the lubricator part doesn't work because we'll be blowing oil blowing onto oil. our pads yeah. so we need to oil these supplementally on our own which sounds like it's a piece of cake anyway so. and with the rupus line when you buy these tool any one of these tools it comes with probably, probably enough oil to last oil. your lifetime yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but again, CFM is a critical thing, and uh, unfortunately, when you're looking at compressors and you did the research, you know how much time yeah. it takes to drill down to the important number, and it's usually fine print in a spec sheet somewhere. Mm -hmm. The marketing specs up front are usually horsepower and tank size and yeah. PSI. Which doesn't, yeah, we need the delivered. Yeah cubic foot per meter, I think CFM, right, of air, right? right. So we need yeah. delivered air to get to this thing. Not only do you need 14 CFM instantaneously, it's gonna suck, no, that's the peak, but so it's gonna suck average, you know, 12, 11, 12, 13 CFM while you're sitting there. Imagine you're doing a whole hood for, yeah. you know, you're gonna run it at four or five minutes straight at times, you know? Yeah. If you're doing, you know, six passes, let's say two and a half minutes. And that's where yeah. your tank size comes in. And you're going to blow it out, put a little more polish, and you're going to go right to it. Yeah. yeah, and then that's where having extra air, having receiver tanks and things like that might yeah. become in handy. But I'm going to vet and test all the compressor stuff. Hey, here, we have a 30 horsepower Kaser rotary screw that's on the other side of the building with three size, inch size lines. It's the car, so it's, right. <laughs> it's big. Right. <laughs> and then right. my, my, this is my air reservoir tank here. You see this? Yeah, there. there's a, there's a hundred, no, that's probably 300. a, okay, a 300 gallon yeah. receiver tank right here. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're not starving for air here, but right, right. Uh, so that's about. the, that's the one key thing with these is that these are fantastic, but you can't get a husky wheeled, you know, side, uh, you know, horizontal tanked, you know, one horsepower a 3500 rpm compressor those are going to deliver five cfm it's it's not even going to move the tool you know it's not going to work so yeah. and then you'll i think you'll damage the tool if you under deliver it you know i, I don't i don't know that for a fact but i think no, that, it is a fact because you will stress the the little fins we talked about that slide mm -hmm. in and out in the motor chamber yeah. you'll damage those with not enough but these do run at uh, 90 90 psi so standard 90 psi they yeah. just need more volume yeah. it's the volume yeah. of air yeah awesome cool. thanks for, thanks for sharing this is great of course so what happens when the when the force pulls you back your foot naturally comes off the gas you have to keep your foot to the floor to the floor to the floor